All right, Zoe Empire week four, heading into a big one here. I, I feel like after four weeks in the books, teams actually start to build up a little bit of a lead with wins or start to dig themselves a little deeper. Right now we have seven teams at one and two. There's a big difference after just this week. You know, Are you going to end up two and two or are you going to be one and three? It's a little too early to start projecting who's doing great and who's not, but after this week we should have more of an idea. One person who's definitely killing it is Mike, sitting at number one, undefeated, 3-0, and highest points four. So when the Cowboys do well, he does well, and the Cowboys are doing very well. Uh, I wanted to point out a couple of other people here. Josh, who's actually in sixth place, he has the second most points for and number one in points against. So he's had a little bit of bad luck sitting at one and two, uh, when obviously he has a, a pretty good team if he's second overall in points for. Uh, another one is Thomas. He's had some pretty hard losses. We'll talk about those in a little more detail later. But he's third in points for, and he's not even in the playoffs right now if, it, if they started today off, this, off these standings. Just some things to look at, things I've noticed. All right, so looking at big injury or losses, Antonio Brown uh, now says he won't retire. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this case. I don't think anyone signs him until it's over. I don't know. We'll see. I never thought Tyree Kill would be playing this year, and uh, here we are. Unless he, if he wasn't injured, he would be. Four to eight weeks for Saquon Barkley on that high ankle sprain, assuming he doesn't need surgery, which the second opinion said he wouldn't. So they're going to wait it out, and hopefully he's back in you know a few weeks. That's a pretty big loss for Matt, but he did just fine even with a limited use Barkley last week. So we had nine trades since my last video. Uh, right after my video came out, there was a couple of big trades, which we'll cover, but just running through, looking at these really quick. Uh, these these five were nothing too serious. There's Joe got a backup running back who got injured right away in the game this week. Mike is continuing to get every single Cowboys player he can by locking up Michael Gallup. Uh, quarterback trade, Marquise Lee, Dante Pettis, okay. Demarius Thomas for a tight end sounds nice uh these two are kind of a, a big deal to me at least from my perspective looking at brian giving away darren waller and russell wilson he got debo samuel jalen samuels and a first round pick next year i think that darren waller is kind of an emerging big deal tight end i know that brian maybe didn't need that necessarily since he has kittle but i, I was surprised to see darren waller go for so little i i know i would have given a lot more for him uh, Russell Wilson, you know, he's kind of a polarizing quarterback. I think that he always ends up doing well, and he's just worth owning. Not everyone feels that way. I mean, I guess the first-round pick was appealing to Brian since he gave it up. Then the two big trades, Aaron Rodgers and Eckler for Tyreek Hill. Tyreek, of course, explosive, uh, fun-to-watch players in the league. Injured right now. Brandon needs wins right now, especially with Antonio Brown out. So he gets Austin Eckler. Is Austin Eckler the real deal? Is he going to keep playing even when Gordon comes back next week? Uh, maybe Brandon's hoping for a split because he owns Melvin Gordon. Either way, this this locks up that backfield. Brandon should have at least one good running back between the two of them going forward. He also gets Aaron Rodgers. Not a bad trade for him. Not a bad trade for Josh either. Who get, He gets Tyree Kill with Mahomes. And then Caleb giving up on the dream, giving up on Juju Smith-Schuster. Moving on. Grabbed four guys, four startable guys, you know, adding some depth to his team, moving on from Juju Smith-Schuster. So those are the nine big trades that happened. And now we'll move on to a week three review. So looking back at week three, uh, definitely a week for Matt. A lot of uh, interesting things happening for him. I think he put together three achievements that are really hard to unlock in combination. So first off, highest score. Okay, scored a lot of points. Overachiever. Uh, he beat his projection by 32%, so, you know, wasn't projected to do amazing, ends up doing the best. All right, those two aren't all that hard to put together, but then add that with this third achievement of worst manager. Worst manager. 78% of his possible perfect lineup. The, those three put together, I don't know how you do that. If you had asked me if that would even be possible, I would have guessed probably no, no one does that this year, but there we have it. Week Week three, Matt pulls it off. He ends up winning despite his best efforts. Russell Wilson put up 45 points and four touchdowns for him, making that trade he did with Brian that we just looked over 
really pay off for him. He got 21 points and two touchdowns from McCoy, who's benefiting from Damian Williams being out. So, again, these are, are two good roster moves that he's made for his team that have really ended up working out for him. 37 points and two touchdowns for Keenan Allen, who balled out for him. Gets Miami next week. So, yeah, you know, his team, even with Barkley getting hurt, ends up doing really well. Big win for Matt. I know one person's probably a little sad about is Thomas, who scored 130 points in that loss versus Matt. Thomas also scored 142 points in a loss versus me in week one, moving Thomas's record to one and two. So again, this is one of those teams that, you know, I feel like it's hard to judge Thomas at one and two three weeks into the season because Thomas has done really well every week and you know, has just had some really hard matchups. All right, now we'll go over some of the cool matchups that we're having in week four. I think one that's always good to look at is is who's ever up on top. So, you know, we, we got to watch Mike. He's still undefeated, 3-0, and projected to be 4-0 and right now. You got to keep an eye on all those games. They're, they're, they're one of the marquee games. You know, everyone likes to see the best play. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be keeping a close eye on this game to see if he can keep the undefeated streak going. Uh, another really fun one I like to watch is, you know, these battle for the bottom matches. We're still very early. So you, Thomas is at 1-2 and two right now, but that can either become 2-2 two and two, where you say, okay, not a, not a bad start. I'm doing average. Or it becomes 1-3 and three, and you go into full panic. Vince and Thomas really battling it out here. Uh, it sh- should be a fun one to watch. You know, it's, it's fun to watch other people suffer. It just is. You, you want to see who ends up in that misery of 1-3. and three. Uh, I asked Thomas if he had any big quotes coming into this game, and all he said to me was, Josh and Brandon have the exact same matchup. Why is mine the battle for the bottom? Well, I mean, that's a fair point. You know, there are seven teams at one and two. Many people are battling for that last place position. Uh, but, you know, I did that awesome picture that you see on the screen there of Vince and Thomas, so that one had to be my battle for the bottom. Fun fact, though, is Brandon has more losses this year than he did all of last season, and we're only three weeks down right now, so that's fun. You know, sometimes things are bigger than just my issues. You know, the big grand scheme of things for us to win. Another matchup I want to look at was Matt Erdman versus Joe. I think this is kind of a fun matchup. They're both two and one teams. Uh, Green Bay, who, you know, they both love, already played. Joe had four players. Devontae Adams tore it up. Aaron Jones tore it up for him. Matt Erdman coming off that really big week three that we just kind of talked about. Again, he's projected to be an underdog. Matt's overcome those projections two times already this year. They're kind of facing the opposite problem of Thomas and Vince here. You know, do they want to have that average two and two start or do they want to be at three and one, which, you know, you're going to feel pretty good about. So here are my picks for the week. You know, these always accurate picks that I have. Uh, I have myself beating Brian. I have Josh beating Brandon. I have our undefeated champion remaining undefeated, Mike. I have Thomas beating Vince. I have Caleb picking up his second win. And I have Joe beating Matt. All right, I'll see you guys next week, and best of luck unless you're facing me.